at uh, Site Syrup tonight. Um, I'd like to start out by asking you, um, do you believe that President Obama's reluctance to intervene in conflicts in the Middle East is purely a result of lessons learned from Iraq or more ingrained in his foreign policy ideology? Well, first of all, I don't think you can really divorce uh, Barack Obama's foreign policy uh, worldview from the lessons that he has learned from Iraq. Um, I think the two are organically linked, and I think one of the lessons that Barack Obama learned from Iraq is that the United States should be extremely cautious about the use of force, and that um, the United States should not intervene militarily unless American vital interests are involved. This has been a pivotal principle in his foreign policy, and that's why Barack Obama has been reluctant to intervene uh, in Libya, in Syria, and now uh, in Iraq, even though um, the rise of the so-called Islamic State has forced Barack Obama's hands. And he's really he's been uh, forced to basically intervene in Iraq now, uh, you know, against his own will. He's screaming and kicking um, as he basically addresses the challenge that the Islamic State uh, uh, faces both in Iraq and the region. And during your talk, you spoke about President Obama moving away from conflict in situations that do not directly affect American interests. Um, when do you believe Obama would see ISIS as directly threatening American interests? Uh, Barack Obama believes that ISIS represents a major threat to the regional order, a major threat to the security architecture in the region, not just in Iraq, but also uh, to Jordan and Saudi Arabia. And also Barack Obama believes that unless the so-called Islamic State or ISIS is stopped in its tracks, ISIS could ultimately represent a major threat to Western interests and the United States itself. Uh, he has made it very clear that the American coalition against ISIS is designed not only to defeat ISIS in Iraq and Syria, but to prevent ISIS from having the capacity to threaten global security particular European and American interests. President Obama has made multiple steps towards normally normalizing relations with Iran during his presidency. Do you believe that he will be able to accomplish his goals with Iran before he leaves office? Well, regardless, if President Barack Obama accomplishes his goal vis-a-vis uh, -vis Iran, um, ends the state of hostility with Iran, reaches an agreement on Iran's nuclear program, I think Barack Obama is deeply committed to reaching a settlement with Iran because this is a high priority for Barack Obama. Barack Obama does not really want to engage in a military confrontation with Iran. Barack Obama also thinks that Iran is a pivotal power, a pivotal power that could play a positive role in the region if the state of institutionalized hostility is, um, um, I mean, uh, ended between the United States and Iran. My take on it is also the strategic goal of Barack Obama is to prevent Iran from obtaining a nuclear bomb. In this particular sense, all in all, it tells me that Barack Obama is deeply committed to reaching a settlement with Iran, and the likelihood is that we might be uh, witnessing a breakthrough in the Iranian-American talks, because both sides, both the Americans and the Iranians, have a vast interest in reaching a settlement. And I think also to the foreign policy, foreign policy team, sorry, to uh, Barack Obama uh, foreign policy team, Iran is as important as China was for the Nixon administration, uh, because Iran could be part of the Obama foreign policy legacy, in particular because Barack Obama is not seen as a foreign policy president. And that's why, for all these reasons, my take on it is that we might be witnessing a historical deal between um, the Islamic Republic of Iran and the United States of America.